Exercise 2. In this exercise, we take a look at the Revolve functionality, uh, Revolve feature functionality inside Creo. Uh, the elements that are included in a Revolve are basically you have a profile of some sort, and you also need to have an axis of revolution or an edge or something to base it off of so it revolves 360 degrees or however many degrees you want it to revolve around from that point. We're going to begin with, this is our, uh, looking at our goal, it's just a, like a wheel, and we're going to go ahead and draw this profile that you see here in the book with the dimensions as you see there. We're going to first draw one half of it, and we're going to have a vertical and horizontal center line drawn in, and then we're going to mirror this across the horizontal center line to make the second half on the bottom, and then revolve it around after we put the dimensions in. So let's begin. So our new part file and call it E2. Hit OK. Select the front plane and start your sketch. Again, you could go to the AB button and go to the front view orientation and proceed to draw a center line. Drag up a vertical center line from the origin. And from the origin, drag a horizontal center line as well. And then middle click two times to complete the center line. Now we need to find the line tool. And you see there's line chain or tangent line. We just want line chain. And up along this edge, you'll click and drag out a vertical line to the left of the center line. And then middle click after you drop it. So again, click, drag up, click again, middle click a couple times. And we just want to change this so that it brings us down, to, scales it down to the proper size. Right now it's at about 24 inches. I'm going to just double click, change it to 1, hit enter. And then also this distance here, in the book we could see that there's a distance of 0.38. You could type in 0.375 actually, because that's technically the right dimension. It just rounds it off. Uh, even though the rounded off dimension shows a 0.38, because it was 0.375, when you export this to a, a CAM package, for example, to be machined, it will still be 0.375. It's just the visual is rounding it. Uh, click on this one inch dimension and delete it so it turns weak. You can you know it's weak by just gliding over it, and you'll see it will say weak. Okay, now we actually are down to the proper scale. We'll go back to the line tool. And continue drawing. So I'm going to draw the horizontal line across, just a short little line, and then I'm going to draw a slightly angled line near the horizontal center line, but not on it. You want it to rest a little bit above it, just like this. Click. You can zoom out if you want, make a little bit more room, and then a horizontal line. Be careful, you don't want to get any L's in there, like that means equal length. Stay away from any L's. You just want an H. No other relations should be established here. Click, drag up a vertical center line. Again, stay away from any of those L's, which means equal length. Just want a V. Click, a short little horizontal line. Again, don't want it connected with any relationship to anything else. Click, and then connect to the bottom line. The middle click to complete it. Then you can middle click to bring up the dimensions, and then from here you can see most of the dimensions that are on here are not what we're looking for, so leave them as weak dimensions. Some of them we could actually use. So for example, this one here needs to be 0.4. I could double click on that, 0.4. If you don't have that dimension, don't worry because we'll learn how to put it in. This dimension needs to be 0.25, so since I have it, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. The others, though, are really invalid. We don't really want to use those. So we'll replace them using the normal dimension tool up here. The next dimension that we need to put in is this dimension from this corner. It's one inch based off of the center line. So we can select that corner, select the vertical center line on the right, and then move your pointer up here above to middle click to drop the dimension. And that's going to be one. We can now put the angle dimension in. 
Angled dimensions are pretty easy. You just have to select in the center. That's the key. Don't select the corners or vertexes. You have to select right in the middle of the line and then find another line you want to relate it to. And wherever that dimension is supposed to be, make sure your pointer is in that location, like resting between these two lines. And then middle click on your middle mouse button or your scroll button. And that's going to be 18 degrees. Okay, then finally one last dimension is going to be from this line here to the center line. Middle click up here. And this is going to be 2.5. Alright, we're going to leave the others alone for right now. We will get those shortly. But what we need to do here is mirror. So middle click a couple times to get out of whatever you're in or hit escape on your keyboard. Now the mirror tool You'll find it right up here, but it's grayed out currently. What you need to do to activate the mirror tool is you get your pointer up. Look at where my pointer is above the upper left quadrant of the screen. I'm going to click and hold down and drag. Make sure you don't have any tools on right now, like you don't want to align or sketch tool accidentally be drawn. We're just out of that, all the tools, and I'm just enveloping what I want to copy. It selects all the geometry. You could control select if you hold control select each individual one if you're having difficulty with this. But in this case, I'm just going to select that group. The mirror tool activates. Now all it's looking for is a center line to mirror across. So I could select the horizontal center line here. And there it is. All right, now I'm going to finish up some of these dimensions. I'm going to try and take and use what they give me. In this case, this one needs to be. Uh, actually, I, we don't want to change that one just yet. Um, in fact, we want to change the dimension between these two. Because if we change this one, notice it's a larger dimension. It's going to squeeze these two lines together, possibly even making them overlap. If that happens to you, you can always hit the undo button up at the top or control Z. But let's take the normal tool, click on these two lines, the middle click over to the left, and that's going to be 0.25. And you could select these two lines as well and middle click and override that other dimension. Otherwise, just escape and select that dimension by double clicking on it. And this is going to be two inches. Okay. So it looks like we pretty much have the bulk of the dimensions here. We still have this dimension though. And that's primarily a dimension that we don't want, it's not on our print. So what we need to do is it's a weak dimension regardless. What happened is when we mirrored over the geometry, it actually ended up deleting that dimension that was between this line and the center line. So let's put that one back in. So select this line here and the center line and the middle click. And that's going to be 0.375. And then that other dimension should disappear. So if that happens to you, that's all you need to do is put in that one dimension. We can lay them out so that they look pretty decent. They're not overlapping each other too much. This helps out the next person who might have to detail the print. Okay, and from here now, we could go ahead and we could revolve. So if you go to the OK button, go to Revolve. And it should pick up on the center line we had drawn. If it doesn't for some reason and you don't see the full 360 degree revolve, what you need to do is click on this little button here and you want to turn on your X, uh, CSYS display. Then you could select the Y axis there as your, uh, what's, what's over here, which is the axis of revolution. So just be aware you can do that if you wanted to. All right, in this case, it's coming out full 360 degrees. That looks good. That's what I want. I'm going to hit the green check mark to apply. Right, I'm going to turn on my shaded with edges just so it's a little bit easier to see and turn off my CSYS display. Even the rotation axis isn't really needed. Okay, at this point now, we want to put in some fillets. Go to the rounds tool to put in fillets. And point one is, is good. Select these edges here and here. 
rotate the part around. Remember, you could do this by middle clicking. You hold down the middle mouse button and drag. If you have a scroll, the scroll zooms in and out. The middle, that same scroll, if you push it down like a button and hold it and move your mouse left and right up and down, it will rotate. Okay, so put those fillets in. Let's put in some larger fillets. Go back to the round tool and we'll make it um, actually we'll just do it visually here you could click on this inside edge and grab the little square and drag it out make it larger add one to this side too by rotating it around hit apply and then finally you could go to the round tool again keep them at point one put some in on these edges You'll see they're all being listed in the feature tree, and if you ever need to edit one, you could just right-click on it and edit the definition, and then you could add to it. So, like, maybe I want to grab these edges here and here. Maybe I want to change the radius. I could type in a new value. There it is. It updated. Go to the uh, standard orientation, which brings me to isometric. And that completes this exercise. Now if you want to hold on, we could see now the lab. The lab is a bolt. And you can see the dimensions. The bolt head's one inch in diameter. The shaft is a half inch in diameter. And there's a little chamfer on the bottom. There's a radius on the top here, 0.75. And some dimensions overall. So it's two inches overall height, 1.7 to the underside of the head. So let's go ahead and try and draw that. We could start a new file. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this one. Oh, by the way, if you need to save this, you can go to the disk or file, save. And we named it E2 already. This is where you get to locate a different place other than the default directory. So where we have E2 part, um, you don't want to type in a new value. You just go up here, user PC will always bring you to that little computer there brings you to all the different drives that are available. You could find your actual flash drive or you could even drop on your desktop if you wanted to and save it at that location just by hitting OK. You don't type in a new name, just hit OK. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I could start a new part. This one's going to be L2. Hit OK. Now for this bolt, I'm going to select the front plane again, start a sketch, go to the front view orientation, and I'm basically going to draw the 2 inch length of that line. So right at the center here, I'm going to click and drag up a vertical line, and then middle click after I drop that second point so that it brings up the dimension. Type in 2. That brings us to scale. Now we could go back to the line tool and continue on. I want a short little horizontal line here. I want a, sh uh, a little bit shorter than that 2 inch line vertical line here. And then a short little length here. Make sure you don't accidentally link it. See the little L's there? You don't want those. You just want it to not link to that equal length. And then click here. And then middle click. Now you could put some more of the dimensions in. Middle click a couple times. This dimension here should be 1.7. This dimension here, it's going to be a, it's going to be a half inch diameter, so it has to be 0.25. So we're basically putting it as a radius here. And then we could go to the normal tool up here, and dimension this to this. Middle click, and then the that the overall diameter is going to be one inch for the head. So that means we have to put, type in a radius 0 0.5 half. It'll click a couple times, get out of the normal tool, or hit escape, and then this needs to be one inch thick. Uh, I'm sorry, point 0.1 thick. All right, all we have to do is connect an arc. So go to the arc tools up here and find. Um, let's go. Let's we'll go three point arc. For three point arc, you just click on this corner, and then this vertex here. Drag it up until you get the perpendicular symbol. Look at that, right where my pointer is, it'll turn to perpendicular. 
little green symbol. That's good. Click, and then middle click a couple times. You could go ahead and now we're ready. You could try and put a dimension on that to see what it gives you. And you'll see what will happen as it says resolve sketch. It actually gives us a dimension. Um, and that's because of the perpendicular and this horizontal here. What we can do is just hit um, undo and just leave it at the perpendicular. Even though the radius is a little bit different there, if you wanted you could delete the perpendicular and put the radius in according to the print, which I believe is 0.75. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And now we could go to Revolve. Select this edge to revolve around and hit the green check mark. The next step is we want to go to the chamfer tool. And on the print, the chamfer is called at a point 03 at 45 degrees. So we want, instead of distance to distance, 45 degrees to distance. And type in point 03. Select this edge and apply. The next thing we're going to do is we need to put the little slot in at the top. We can do that by selecting the front plane and starting a sketch. Go normal to that, which basically means go to the front view orientation. Draw a center line at the origin, straight up. And now you could draw in a little line here. Down, click across, middle click once, and actually click across here to close that. So we're making like a V with a top. Now we could put in some of the dimensions, but before we do that, let's actually first mirror it across. So middle click a couple times, make sure nothing else is selected. Click right up here where my pointer is and drag a fence surrounding the geometry you want to mirror. And then go ahead and select the mirror tool right over here. Select the center line to mirror about it, and there it is. At this point, now we're going to go ahead and put in these dimensions for the slot. It's 30 degrees across, it's uh, 0.1 at the base, and it's 0.15 off from the bottom edge. So we could go ahead and go to the normal tool and select the middle of both of those angled lines and then go right between them at the top here and middle click. It's going to be 30 degrees. Then dimension this bottom edge to this edge of the underside flange of the bolt head. That's going to be 0.15. And then middle click a couple times to get out of it. And then this dimension here, you just double click on, or you could add it manually. And this is going to be 0.1. Now it doesn't matter that this is sticking up above. You definitely want to stick it out and above because it's our tool to, it's going to be used to cut. So we hit OK. Go to the extrude tool. And you'll see it's extruding in one direction. That means over here on the left, make sure you select both directions. Extrudes on both sides. Make sure it extends well beyond the boundaries. And then select the Remove Material tool. And hit the green check mark. And that completes the bolt head.